One thing that we know that's inevitable is that at some point, some student is going to break a rule at our school. That's something that's inevitable. That happens at every single school. So knowing this, we have to have something in place to address the disruptive behavior when it happens. For as long as I've been living and long before I entered the picture, we've always had traditional consequences. Now, even traditional consequences have evolved over time. At one point, corporal punishment was prevalent throughout the country. Now, very few states allow corporal punishment, and even in states that do allow corporal punishment, many districts within those states are choosing not to administer corporal punishment. Detention, suspension, all of these things are traditional consequences. So to simplify things, why don't we refer to these practices as punishment? Now, to be fair, punishment worked for an extended period of time, particularly when my parents were in school. Punishment was an effective tool to correct behavior. However, as time has evolved, so have the students. In reality, so has the parenting. Because of this, these traditional consequences aren't as effective. In recent years, schools have discovered that these traditional consequences aren't yielding the results that they're looking for. Behavior isn't changing. So one concept that has evolved is creating a systematic approach to rules and procedures on the campus and rewarding students for their behavior. A lot of us know this as PBIS, Positive Behavioral Interventions and Supports. I feel you can sum up PBIS in three words, structure, rewards, and intervention. I know that some people feel very strongly about it and feel that it really positively impacts the culture and climate of their campus. I know there are others out there that think it's one of the worst things that's ever been created. If you're a traditionalist, rewarding students for doing what they're supposed to do is going to make your head explode. So I get the mixed feelings about PBIS. My opinion about PBIS is no different than my opinion of traditional consequences. I see some positives and potential for how it can be effective. I also see some negatives that don't allow us to fulfill the objective we're trying to meet when we're, we're talking about changing students' behavior. So some initiatives that have picked up some momentum in the last few years have been restorative practices and social emotional learning. I like to sum up restorative practices and social emotional learning in the two words, teaching behavior. When you look at all three approaches side by side by side, you have to acknowledge that all have their pluses and all have their minuses. If you're an objective proponent of any of them specifically, you have to acknowledge that there are some flaws within each of these practices because there's nothing that we have that is perfect. So when it comes to the question of which one you should adopt to meet the behavioral needs of your campus, my answer is all three of them. In isolation, all three have holes. Traditional consequences don't teach the appropriate behavior. PBIS does not focus on accountability. The restorative practices in SAL do a great job of teaching the appropriate behavior, but we're in a society that's governed by rules. We're in a society where punishment is a norm. You cannot take traditional punishment out of the equation. To be honest, this is where restorative practices and SEL miss the mark. It doesn't necessarily have to be this way, but this is the common perception that people have when they hear restorative practices and now SEL. A kid punches another kid in the face, we all hold hands, sway side to side, that kid says I'm sorry, we all hug, and then that kid goes ahead and goes back to class and nothing happened to him. That's the perception of what restorative practices is. With SEL, one of the biggest misconceptions is we can't hold this student accountable until we make them social and emotionally aware. It's not fair to them until we do that. That's far from the case and that's not going to be acceptable either. We can walk and chew gum at the same time. What you have to do is work on changing the behavior while you're administering the traditional consequence. The reality of it is there's no perfect system. And so because nothing is perfect, we need to take the best components from each, bring them together based on the needs of your particular campus and your particular students, and create the perfect system for your campus.